praise you and we thank you and we worship you for this morning. Lord God, we come to celebrate how amazing you are, Lord. You celebrate your goodness. We celebrate that you're not dead, but you're alive, that you've risen, that you've conquered Satan, sin and death. And Lord, we want to celebrate you and thank you for all you've done. Thank you this morning. Amen. Stand on our feet so we're going to worship Jesus together.
presented. Great, so grab a seat for a moment, please. Just going to invite a couple of people to come and share their stories. There's a couple of people that uh, I've asked to come and share this morning because we believe that Jesus isn't just, wasn't just relevant 2,000 years ago, but he's relevant today, that he works in our lives today. He makes a difference today. He means something today. So, Paul, do you want to come and share? And Chris, if you want to get yourself ready with your painting, that would be awesome. I don't know. I do feel comfortable. <laughs> Hi, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Paul. Um, I've been a member of Marshall Church for a few years now. Um, when Dave asked me to come and speak, I honestly didn't have a clue what to say until about nine o'clock this morning, when God spoke to me and said, what does Easter mean to you? Is it about chocolate? Which I do like. I love chocolate. Cat will tell you I probably eat too much of it. Is it about fluffy bunnies? Is it about family? Or is it about what God has done for us? And I sat there thinking, do you know what? It's all about what God has done for me. For me and for you. When Jesus died on the cross, God gave his only son for us. Before we were even born, God loved us and cared for us. And I sat there thinking about it and I was thinking, God's loved me throughout my life. I was born in a Christian home, I went to church, I gave my life to God when I was 10. God has always loved me and has never left me and has never let me down. Even though different times in my life, I've walked away from God. I've ignored him. I've treated him badly. And to be fair, I've not been a very nice friend to him at all. For instance, so just a few things from my life. When I was 18, I had a head-on car crash with another car, which was my fault. I walked away. At the time, I had a job, I had money, I had a car. Life was good. But I wasn't focused on God. But God was still there. He had his hand upon me saying, I love you. I'm protecting you and I'm caring for you. Even if you don't want to know it, I'm there. Then a few years later, I got married and life was good again. I had my own business. I had money. I had employees. I, had, I thought I had everything. But again, I wasn't focused on God. I'd ignored him. And it wasn't until the point where I had a breakdown and I had depression and I lost my business when God actually said, you know what, I still love you. And I still care about you, even though you've messed up massively, I still love you. And I'll still welcome you back with open arms. Now, two years ago, um, I was in a job, full-time employment, had money again. And God said to me, give it all up and work for me. I said, yeah, right, whatever. He said, no, give it all up and work for me. So I did. I gave up my job two years ago. And you'd think, working in the church and working for the church, you'd think, well, that's great. You can't get any closer to God. And you certainly can't get away from him because you're in the church. Uh -uh. I started working in the church, and then we took on this building, the Riviera. And for some of you that might not know, I headed up the building work for the Riviera. My life became the project. I focused so much on the project of the Riviera that I didn't even look at God. I didn't even talk to God about it. And when things started to go wrong... I tried to fix it myself, and I tried to run away, and I tried to do my own thing. And I said, you know what, God, I don't want to know about that, because I've got my own thing to do. And it was only recently, about three, four months ago, I decided to walk away from it all. I decided I'd had enough, and I didn't want to be here anymore. And then one day I was sat thinking about, again, what has God done for me, and what is it you want, God? Why am I doing this, and why am I feeling the way that I'm feeling? And Sue, Sue Thomas had sent me a photograph when I first gave up my job. And she resent it to me. And I don't know why she resent it to me, but she did. And I opened up the photograph and God was saying, I've got a plan. You need to walk in it. And at that time, we'd, we've got UCB car radio. I was driving along listening to the radio. And a song came on that I'd never heard before. And the lyrics are, what if you gave everything to me? Why are you still standing still? step out on the waters and step out in faith and God was saying you know what I want you back I still want you even though you've messed up I still love you and I still care for you so my challenge today would be I know some of you here may not know Jesus get to know him speak to someone speak to me after the service speak to someone from Mars Hill and get to know him if you have known him but you don't focus on him and you've kind of gone away and you feel a little bit distant 
get back in touch with him. He loves you. He's not going to say, you know what, I'm too busy. He wants to welcome you back with open arms. And for those of us that feel close to God at the moment, are you doing what God has asked you to do daily? Are you still walking with him daily? Or are we just coming to church on a Sunday and going to connect on a Wednesday or a Tuesday, whenever it is, and think we've got it sorted? What's God saying to you today? Every day God speaks to me and every day God challenges me on something. But he loves us. And no matter where you've been or what you've done, Jesus died on the cross for us and he rose again to give us life and life to the full. Let's go. Chris, Chris is going to say something about what God's put on his heart. Okay, I find this uh, quite difficult being up here, but I'll do my best. A year ago, I was standing down there doing this painting. Okay, yeah, I was down up here. Okay. <laughs> I was, I was down here doing this painting in the semi-dark, I remember it well. <laughs> Halfway through it, they switched the lights out. Anyway, um, when Dave asked me to preach on this, I want to say something on this. Um, I asked the question why. It's, um, it's, it's Resurrection Day. It's, it's not this. And, um, and that question why gave me a clue perhaps to what God wanted to say. We often ask the question, why, of God? Um, sometimes we accuse him of not being there, of not caring. Um, we can be in the midst of terrible pain or watching others going through terrible pain. And God sometimes seems distant. He doesn't seem there. And Jesus on the cross, he asked so many questions through his ministry, but he asked one directly to God. And it sound, sounds like an accusation, but I don't believe it was any kind of accusation. He cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And that took me right back. I realized that God had already prepared those words in advance. Jesus must have known them, walked with them, thought of them many times through his ministry because of the opening lines of the 22nd Psalm. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 1,000 years before Jesus. Amazing. And if all I can do is recommend that you go, when you go home, you read that Psalm. Spend time with it. It's incredible. Absolutely incredible. It's like being in the mind of Jesus. It's like seeing with his eyes and hearing with his ears. The taunts, the insults of the people around, around him, hating him, watching. A thousand years this was written, written ago, long before it happened on Calvary. Jesus was watching men gambling, casting lots for his garments. That's in the 22nd Psalm. It's astonishing. It, <laughs> the crucifixion as a means of execution hadn't even been invented. 400 years later, it was invented. It was refined by the Romans. And yet the psalmist speaks of nails being driven into feet and into hands. And then you hear of Jesus' heart. He became sin for us. He loves us so much. He went so deep into the pit of what it is to be human that he suffered everything. He, he, on, in the 23rd, 22nd Psalm, he cries, he says these words, I am a worm, not a man. He went, <laughs> no one could go further. We owe him everything. If we feel sorry for ourselves, put it in that context of what he did for us. He became sin. He lost sight of his father. who had been with him all his life for those few moments. And then he died. They took down the body. They lay him in a tomb. And a stone was rolled over it. And I think that's a good way, good time to pass. Praise God.
What an incredible message. The, the God who didn't know any sin became sin so that we could be right with him again. And that's the message that we've heard from Paul, from Chris, that God makes a difference in our lives today, that his love for us is endless. He pursues us continuously. And our prayer this morning is whoever we are, that we may meet with Jesus today. Let's carry on worshipping him.
Yes, there we go. Yay! Yay! Woo! <laughs> right, who are looking forward to their Easter eggs? Now, how many Easter eggs do you think we eat in a year? How many? A thousand. A thousand? Any more? Ten? Wow. Forty ten. That's a good number. <laughs> Anyone else? Higher? Any of the adults? No? How many? How many? Ad more advances on 50 million. Any advances? Have I got any more? No, more than 50 million. A little bit less than 100 million. 80 million. You win at the back there. Woo! <laughs> 80 million eggs. 220 million pounds. Do you know how much, how expensive the most expensive Easter egg is? How much do you think? No. How much? 600. Close to, to John said something. A bit more than 20,000. 25,000. That's crazy. Do you know it's made by Chaka Waka Doo Seriously, that's what it's called, Chaka Waka Doo 25,000 pounds. <laughs> Incredible. Now, Paul was talking about life and life to the max, and he was saying, is it about the Easter eggs? Is it about these different things? And it's quite easy in our society to kind of get um, caught up with all the Easter eggs and stuff, but we really want to encourage us this morning about who Jesus is. I don't mind, he can chuff on my face. <laughs> he can tap out a little beat on the feet, that's all right. <laughs> um, and, and, and we want to really... We want this Easter to be about Jesus, you know? We really want to kind of focus on how important he is. Now, this is maybe what the world might like us to believe what life to the life to the max is, and Paul's just going to play a very quick video. Some of you may remember this video. We're going to need some sound, though. Come down off the steps though. Come down off the steps. Pepsi Max advert, anyone remember it? Live life to the max. So what does life actually mean? What is life really about? Is life the relationships we had? You know, Paul talks about a few different things. Is life about whether we can afford to buy a 25,000 pound Easter egg? <laughs> What, what does it mean to have life and life to the full? What would you say it means? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Anyone else less Christian? <laughs> what does it really mean to have life and life to the max? Have what you want, do what you want. Is it about how much we enjoy life, how fulfilled we feel, how much we've got, how much we can do? And yet Jesus... Be as selfish as possible. Lovely. <laughs> Me. And, I, and, you know, I mean, it, across our world, there's, we, you know, we love each other and we, there are people doing great things out there. But life and life often to the max is about the here and now and about how, how good we feel at the moment. Whereas God wants to show us that life and life to the max comes through Jesus. There's this crazy story where his mate Lazarus dies and his sister comes up to Jesus and says, why did you let him die? And, and he talks about him, himself in this way. Jesus said this, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus said, this is who he is. Later on, in, that's in John 11, in John uh, chapter, if you've got it, open up 14, he's chatting to his followers, and this is what he says to them, let not your hearts be troubled, believe in God, believe also in me, in my Father's house and many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself. That where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas says to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus says this, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father. 
from now on you do know him and have seen him. Jesus is saying that he is God and that if you want to know what life is, it comes through him. And our encouragement this morning, you heard it through the testimonies of Paul, the testimony of Chris, their stories, is that they tried to find it in other things. You know, life was trying to be found in what you did or how you felt or what people think of you. And what they've discovered is, is that only, the only true life comes through Jesus. Because he said he is the resurrection and the life. See, life is, doesn't end when you die. Life is something eternal. It doesn't end when you die. It goes on forever. And, and, and the Bible's clear on this, that God wants us to understand that life should go on to the max forever. And that through Jesus, that we get to be with him in this life forever. That we get to understand what it means to be the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus said this in John 10, that, that he is life and life to the full. So rather than running this roller coaster of a life that we have, where one minute we're feeling on top of the world and everything's going well, and then feeling kind of down in the dumps when things are, are not going right, it isn't dependent upon that. We find that whatever life throws at us, even if it is difficult, that we still have life because we have Jesus. You know, that last song, I was really kind of moved by that last song when it was talking about this kind of fire. This, this fire of love burning in us. And here's my question to you, is have you experienced that fire of love? Have you experienced a love that's like no other? Have you experienced a love that will rock you to the core of your being? That actually speaks to, about, to you about who you are and how much you are cared for. Do you, um, do you, have you experienced the love of God to such an extent that you've literally had to fall upon your knees and say, man, I just don't get this world. I don't get anything else that's going on. But in this moment, in this time, God, you mean everything. You make sense of everything that is going on around me. Yes. And if you haven't experienced that today, God wants to reveal himself to you. Jesus wants to turn up in your life today. That the Holy Spirit wants to rest upon you and bubble away in you and burn something in you that will go on forever. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the resurrection and the life. He is life and life to the full. So if this morning, through the songs that we sung, through the words that have been spoken from the stories that have been shared. If you want to know this Jesus, you have an opportunity this morning to say yes to him. If you want to know this Jesus, if you want to know a love that's like no other, if you want to know a life that is more full than you've ever experienced before because it's him and him in you, you have an opportunity to meet with him this morning. If you want to know Jesus today, if you want to rededicate your life to Jesus today, just stick a hand up where you are. Just for a moment. Praise God. Praise God. Anyone else? Praise Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Can I ask Jane to mobilize a few people just to go and just pray with the people that have got their hands raised? Jesus is burning his love into people's hearts today because he loves them so much. Just over here. If you want prayer, just put a hand up again, please. I'm not going to say anything. Just if we can pray with joy here. And over here, can you put your hands up again just for me a moment, please? Emily, do you want to turn around and pray? There. Fantastic. Does anybody else want God to want people to pray for them? Pray God's love and burning fire in their hearts. Whether you've known him for a time or not, but you want something fresh, something new of the infilling, empowering of the love of God. Just place a hand in the air and someone will come and pray with you. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's just pray together and I'm going to ask the band to come up and they're going to, we're going to carry on singing and we're going to carry on worshipping. Just to say... 
that if you want prayer for anything else, we'll also be just hanging around at the front here. If you're sick and you want healing, we'll pray for you. We believe God heals today. We'll minister and pray with you in any way that God wants to move this morning. So don't miss the opportunity. Let's just pray together. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for people who have raised their hands today, Lord God, who have opened up their hearts to you. We ask now that Holy Spirit, Lord God, that you will meet with them, that you will fill them and empower them and share Jesus with them in such a real way that your love will be burned in their hearts for eternity. Lord God, we thank you that this is a fire that never goes out, that continues to burn. And Lord, across this place, in this room, whether we know you here or not, Lord, we read, dedicate our lives to you. And we thank you, Jesus, that you took the initiative, that you gave everything for us, that you died and you rose again, that you saved us from our sin, that you delivered us from the power of sin on our lives, you broke it in our lives, and you gave us new life. And Lord, we just thank you for that. And Lord, help us to walk in that truth every single day so that Jesus is seen every single day in and through us. For his glory we ask it. Amen. Amen. So I want to kind of sing and say if anyone wants to pray.